So, Ginger, please tell me how my mother, Suze Randall, saved your life. She she really honestly did save it. What happened was my uh, father was back in Rockford, Illinois, and went into uh, an adult bookstore, got the little token, went in, and there I was being fucked doggy style by Ron Jeremy. Oh, no. Yeah. That's and, a terrible way for a father to find out. Are you kidding me? Of all people. I mean, oh it was just... <laughs> with Ron Jeremy. And it was with Ron. So my father... Tells the guy that owns the store he wants to buy every copy of this and get him out of there. And the guy says, fuck you. No, I'm not going to do that. And my dad is a cop, or was at the time. And my dad beat the guy up that owned the store. So my dad got arrested, got called my grandmother, got bailed out, took my grandmother down to the dirty bookstore, made her watch. And she's like, that's not Ginger. That's not Ginger. She just refused to believe it was oh me. And the only difference was I'm naturally a redhead. And so I had blonde hair. And I was Ginger Lynn instead of Ginger Lynn Allen, and my grandmother still didn't believe it was oh me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So it was it was really horrible. So I, I get a phone call from my answering service saying that there's a family emergency at about 6 o'clock in the morning one, one day. And so I, I call him thinking that, you know, my grandma's died or something horrible has happened. Right. And my father picks up and he goes, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like. Holy shit, because I told him I posed for Penthouse, but I didn't tell him that I was doing porn. Mm -hmm. And it it was the worst conversation ever. My family means so much to me, and I'm so close with them. My dad's my best friend. I was disowned. I was told not to come home for Christmas. I have three younger brothers and sisters. I was told I, I was not allowed to see them. And I was just suddenly so alone. Right. And I, I started doing cocaine. I just was doing coke and I was fucking up and I was showing up late to sets and I, I would still be up after, you know, all being all night and show up to a set wired. And was just, that as prevalent in the eighties as the, as people believe it was? Um, not for me, not on set. It mm-hmm. was on set a lot, but I don't like to fuck on coke. Uh-huh. I, you know, I, I used to love coke, but mm-hmm. I wanted to talk. I didn't want to fuck. Mm-hmm. So it was not, it didn't work well for me during mm-hmm. porn. Um, so you. I'm disowned. I'm fucking up. Uh, I'm not getting the work. I'm not looking good. I'm way too skinny. And I live in this this uh, house up in Topanga Canyon, in this big A-frame house. And your mom shows up at my door. Now, I'm in the middle of nowhere. This is not a place you just show up. You've got to drive up and find the canyons in the back. Mom, and my the, mom's good at that. Yeah. She likes so, to make her appearances. Oh, yeah. So your mom just shows up. She comes in. She's got a joint behind her ear. She sits me down and she tells me I'm fucking up. She's like, you've got choices here. You can you can just go downhill and fuck up and, 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 and lose it. Or you can get your shit together and be the star that you can be. Because right now you're just fucking up. Wow. And we smoked the joint and we talked for hours. And your mom told me to incorporate. Your mom told me to teach to treat it like a business. Your mom told me if I'm going to be stupid enough to do drugs, don't do them when I'm working. Your mom stopped me from, after the talk with her, what I did was I bought an eight ball of Coke. Uh, (laughs) And I sat down and I wrote my father a letter, which I still, he passed away a few years ago and I have the letter back. And basically I said to him, you know what? You raised me with these values. You raised me to believe in myself. You raised me to never say yes to anything I didn't want to do. You raised me to have this set of morals and life skills. And I have those and I love those. And if I worked at 7-Eleven, if I were the president, or if I'm fucking on film, I'm the same girl. And if you choose to disown me and not love me when you told me you don't judge people, then fuck you. I don't want you as my parents anymore. And... Uh, my father called me crying. We both cried. I got my shit together. I stopped doing drugs. Uh, not com- well, for a while. For a while. For, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I stopped doing them recklessly where I was ruining my life. Right. I, I, I was much more of a recreational drug user than right. the daily that I had become. So your right. mom, had she not shown up that day, I, I don't know what would have happened. I, I don't know if I would have written that letter to my parents. I don't know if I would have just totally lost it completely, but it would not have been a good scenario any way that you look at it. And so your mom, she doesn't remember it. And it's one of the most uh, life-changing experiences that I've ever had. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I love to hear those stories. Yeah. I, I, 
love your mom. She's just I one of the two. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.